All right, welcome everybody to the October 19th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Um, if you've been on the call before, you already know this, but uh, for those of you who are new, we do have two things that we have to abide by. The first one is our antitrust policy. Um, basically, there are a number of different people on the call and we need to make sure that we are aware of and not participating in any activities that are prohibited under any of the antitrust and competition laws across the world. And then the second thing that we have to abide by is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, respect, be, respect, be respectful of everybody on the call, their ideas and thoughts. For announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you do have anything that you would like to include in that newsletter, please do leave a comment uh, for consideration on the link that's in the agenda. The second announcement that we have is that the TOC call for nominations period has begun and it will end on October 31st at the end of day Pacific time. So if you are interested in running for the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee, please do uh, add your nomination. There are instructions at the uh, link that's in the agenda for you to submit your nomination. The last announcement that we have is that on Thursday, November 16th, there will be a workshop uh, that is the atomic cross ledger transaction between Hyperledger Base 2 and Quarter Ledgers using Hyperledger Cacti V2. And if you are interested in joining that workshop, please do click on the link to register uh, for that particular workshop. Any other announcements that anybody has or would like to make? Okay, uh, so we do have three quarterly reports that have come in caliper, caliper cacti and fabric. Um, as of yesterday, when I took a look, it looked like each of them had about seven reviews um, from the TOC members. I didn't see anything as far as uh, questions or comments that were in those reports. I did, however, see that there was a question from Peter uh, in the cacti report about Hacktoberfest. Um, as far as I know, Peter, we do not advertise that to anyone um, within the Hyperledger community. I think it's up to each of the maintainer groups as to whether or not they want to participate in that. Um, but uh, yeah, anybody know of anything that we specifically do for Hacktoberfest? I don't think uh, Hyperledger has ever formally participated in it. Um, but if projects want to, um, that's great. Um, I think you just use the, the tag on your bug for your issue and uh, go forth and prosper. And Peter, Cacti is participating in, in that this year, is that correct? Yes, we've been a recurring uh, user participant of Hacktoberfest and uh, it's pretty good for uh, getting new people exposed to the project. Of course, there's uh, the nature of it comes with a lot of drive-by contributions too, but uh, we'll just take what we can get. And, and in that philosophy, it's, it's great because uh, there's always one or two people who submit more than exactly one contributions as well. I, I, this has just triggered something in my brain, I want to show you guys this. This is a website that's generated automatically uh, for CNCF that, uh, you know, you can, it picks up the issues that are good first issues. And, uh, you know, it kind of pulls everything in together. This might be something that Hyperledger could look into later when I have a bunch of free time. <laughs> It looks interesting, right? Um, and I'm sure it's open source code, so we could probably utilize it for Hyperledger and the different projects there. So, Arno? Yeah, just uh, this is interesting. I was exposed to another tool apparently they have called Cielo Monitor. You might try, and it only covers CNCF and LFAI. 
but it does a bunch of like gives you a bunch of dashboards and information about the state of a repository. It's also I, interesting. I only found out about that uh, in the last couple of days, and I have been working uh, to try to get the whole. Uh, they have Clo Tributor, Clo Monitor, uh, Clo Warden, and uh, Clo UI. I've, I've been working to get that set up so that we have better tools. So I'm working on it. Very cool. Thanks. Okay. Uh, sorry, I had to go off and do my uh, searches to find those things. So um, <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> You guys, thank you for distracting me. Um, interesting things to take a look at for us to uh, consider moving forward. Um, okay. Uh, so any any questions or comments then on the quarterly reports that I may have missed that we need to bring up in this discussion? No, okay. Uh, so we'll obviously wait until everybody approves it or we reach our two week time frame on those reports before we merge them. Um, but it looks all like they'll probably be merged uh, within the two week time frame. So for upcoming reports, we do have the Q4 Hyperledger Sawtooth report that is due next week. Um, so we'll look to see that one coming in next Thursday. And then for discussion items today, the only thing I had on the agenda was the documentation task force update. Is there anything else that we do need to discuss today that I may have missed? No, okay. Uh, so then, Bowie, off to you, documentation task force update. And Bobby, you're on mute. Yes, I know. I'm off mute now. Thank <laughs> you very much. I'm trying to do the presentation, um, get it uh, in slide mode, and then share my screen. Yeah, that didn't work. Hold on just a moment. I thought yep. we were going to go over some quarterly reports for a second. <laughs> you thought there was going to be some discussion there, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it usually is. So I was like, OK, I got a minute. Uh, there we go. I should be good to go. Let me share my screen. Let me know when you see my screen. Yep, we can see the screen. Okay, excellent. So welcome everyone to the October 19th TOC call in which the uh, recommendations from the documentation task force are being presented to the TOC for their feedback. Um, the documentation task force started um, from the TOC's need to organize the documentation in the community um, and get it uh, organized so that it's consistent, reliable, and what everybody um, expects from the excellence of the Hyperlizard Foundation. So we were working as a task force um, up until the mentorship program, and then we um, had uh, put it into the mentorship program and got a uh, mentee, the manager, who I call Arunama, the manager, um, and then some other volunteer mentees that stayed with the project because they believed in um, what we were doing and wanted the experience and they'll present today. And I think you'll be impressed with them as much as I am because they are a fabulous group of, of people. So let's get started. Um, today's agenda, we're just gonna go over the um, objectives of the group and the goal of the group. Um, we're gonna talk about the areas we worked on, those six areas. Um, and then we found uh, during those during the discussions of those six areas, we do weave in a little um, AI tools in the documentation because I don't think you can really have an effective enterprise documentation effort without AI now. Um, so some of the demos we do are during um, the six topics and then some are overall for the Hyperledger Foundation um, in general. And then some final recommendations for documentation for Hyperledger. Like I said, the agenda 
And now I'm going to turn over the rest of the presentation to Arunima. Um, Arunima, it's all you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bobby, for handing over the presentation. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Arunima Chaudhary, and currently I'm a master's student at NIT Warangal. Uh, I have been working uh, as a, a task force leader under the documentation task force for the past uh, four months. Uh, I am also LFX mentee under the documentation standards project and the committee chair of the uh, documentation task force uh, advance. Okay, so uh, 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 pro so there are some uh, problems that we identified with the current documentation that we are working on uh, to uh, solve it. Uh, there are there is a uh, lack of clear guidelines, uh, lack of consistency, also some uh, lack of uh, standard templates and graphic library. Uh, so the goal of the hyperledger documentation task force is to create and maintain a high quality, accessible, innovative, and community-driven documentation that supports uh, both users uh, and contributors of Hyperledger's technologies um, while upholding the high standard of compliance and inclusiveness. And yeah, so these are some of the objectives that the documentation task force is working on, uh, starting with interactive and community-driven content, accessible templates and style guides, uh, modular documentation. Uh, the need of modular documentation uh, arises uh, from the fact that if there is an update in any feature, so for that we don't have to update the entire documentation. We can just update that particular module. Then we have uh, uh, user guides uh, for different audiences, accessibility and education. Advance. Uh, so uh, identifying the needs of the document of the doc the various documentation needs we divided ourselves into uh, six uh, uh, subcommittees to cater to each of the needs uh, starting with github templates uh, the chair of github templates is uh, Gianluca and I would like to hand over the stage to him so that he can share updates on uh, the github templates subcommittee that is uh, doing some wonderful work in the GitHub templates area. Uh, Gianluca, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Arunma. Hello, everyone. I'm Gianluca Capuzzi, and on this, this project, I'm focusing on a standard documentation bucket. The name is GitHub template, and it is related to documentation in order to support the different status of the project and also maintainers and the new maintainers in the life cycle. And uh, next slide, thank you. Okay, this is a, a list of the different uh, status of the project. Uh, for example, one is the, the proposal, uh, which is, um, is important for people who wants to uh, propose a new project to the Hyperledger ecosystem. And uh, on, on right, we have a list of uh, example of uh, support, for example, the tokenization and badges, user guides and dashboard. And um, next slide. And uh, we have also an example um, about the, the proposal status. Uh, status. Uh, we, ha um, we have an example of uh, support, for example, the, the checklist, which add in, in a sort of way um, uh, cost sent to people and support the people who wants to propose the project uh, in, the, uh, in, in the process. And also it's important, for example, to add um, other improvement uh, could be AI tools that support documentation creation, updating, management, and so on. Okay. For, for us, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, the next subcommittee to cater to another section of needs of the documentation is the GitHub Make the Docs. 
and uh, this uh, the committee chair of github make the docs is tripur uh, so i will again hand over the stage to tripur so that she can share the updates of the subcommittee and what we have been doing there thank you arunima uh, hi everyone hope everyone is having a great time here in the presentation and my name is tripur joshi and i am the committee chair of make the talks i am helping in turning repos into amazing guides moving forward i will start with uh, spreading some light on how Hyperledger is providing a very premium tool to every member in the community, which is Make the Docs, which is not relatively known among the members. And due to which it creates challenges in the project, and they try to find other alternative solution which are like open source. And in fact, Make the Docs itself is a open source documentation platform, and it, even though it is a very valuable resource for us. i would like to provide some alternatives to it which i will be uh, talking about in the coming slides now this is a uh, a quick setup guide how we install the make the docs first of all we need to install python and pip for uh, then we will install with the help of pip we will install uh, make the docs and other essential dependencies and through that we will uh, install custom themes uh, what type of themes do we want in our site next we will go to the configuration of the site how we want our navigation description to look like what name do we want for our site so this is a quick setup guide uh, of how we will set up make the docs in our own device moving forward on the next uh, slide we uh, i am coming back to the alternative that i started with that even though make the docs is a very uh, good resource we have an alternative for that and which is gitbook why i am comparing both uh, the documentation tool is that i am going forward with five points first is setup the first point uh, as we have already seen while we were setting up make the docs we have to download python then we have to download pip then we have to download other st stuff with that and other dependencies but with gitbook we just have to do a simple login with our own github id and we can start working on our git git uh, like our documentation second uh, point that is ease of use as you all know that as a technical writer we should know markdown if we are working on make the docs we should know markdown but with gitbook there is no like necessity for that even if you are non technical user you can simply uh, press on the plus button and you can start writing whatever you want paragraphs or code do you want to insert in it other is collaboration the collaboration while working on documentation is very important we need multiple uh, people to collaborate with us coders developers maintainers everyone but in make the docs uh, we require external tool for it but in github it is already a built in collaboration tool so there is already a built in collaboration tool we don't need any external uh, tool for that same goes with version control here we need a to uh, need to create a separate github repository when we are working with make the docs as gitbook is part of github it has a seamless integration with it so we don't need any uh, like external uh, things for that same the last point which i think is very important is analytics uh, make the docs does not provide any analytics whatsoever once this website is published which i think that should be there and it is a built in feature in github book like how many people are visiting the website what uh, seo search uh is there working as and all the important things so that's why i think that uh, github gitbook should be there and while i like to present a demo about it we all know how make the docs work but let's uh, look at how gitbook work so i'll be sharing my screen hope everyone can see it Uh, we just have to type git book and click on the first link that comes up 
simple process. We will sign up with our GitHub. It's opening. And uh, this is my team library. I am working, uh, I created one Hyperledger standard documentation, uh, user documentation for all the, all the coders who are new to technical writing and don't know how to move forward with their documentation, how, how to uh, create documentation. And I have created few steps for it. Like how can they do? and uh, why it is easy for me to work on git book rather than make the docs is if i want to add a page i will simply do new documentation now uh, once it opens i just have even if i don't know markdown i can just simply put a like uh, click on the add button i need heading one and i can start working on it like documentation simple as that and if uh, i want to add a code I can simply insert a code block here. I don't need any external things with it. If I want to share with it uh, to it anyone with it anyone, I've already shared it with Bobby. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do it as a reader, as a creator, administrator, editor, whatsoever. And if I upgrade it, I can also uh, share it as a commenter. So it has multiple, you know, uh, benefits of using Gitbook. You can publish a space for a website space for that, export as a PDF, share to an audience who can access it. All these kind of things, which I think uh, is missing in Make the Docs, and uh, one of the accessibility things which is missing. And uh, this is how we will use GitBook. Moving forward with that presentation, I would like Bobby to share the screen again. So yeah, now moving forward is I will introduce one of my favorite AI tools that uh, I came to know when I was working with the team is Whimsical. And it is basically an AI generating, uh, diagram generating tool, uh, which helps you with different kind of stuff like flowchart, diagram, UML, wireframes, and you don't have to do anything with that. And it is easily compatible with uh, Git, uh, Google Docs, and uh, Figma and all the other stuff. Now I would like to show a demo of it again. Hope everyone can see my screen. If not, please let me know. Uh, you just have to write whimsical. Click on the first link that comes up. It's a very seamless uh, website and you know, uh, once you start working on it, you get a hang, uh, like a hang of it. If I create a new one, uh, a board, and uh, I want to create a mind map, suppose, and uh, I want to create about, let's start with documentation. Like I need some mind map on document, sorry. documentation and I don't have any ideas for it, how would I like expand it or anything. I will just uh, click on generate ideas and it will do the work for me. Like uh, what type of documentations are there, user, manual, technical documentation, API documentation. It's stop working. Okay. So yeah, this, uh, I can also zoom it out. And if I want to go deeper into it, I like, I want to know about uh, how can I start working with a API documentation. I will again click on generate ideas and it will start doing it for me, like quick start guide and all that stuff. So I think it's a very useful AI tool that we should uh, like know about it. 
and it will also help us in being more effective in our work. Again, uh, going back to our presentation, there's one another tool that I like to discuss. Bobby, could you please share the presentation again? Looks like maybe you're on mute. Can you see my screen? Can see uh, the oh, screen. Sorry. Can't hear. Oh, I was <laughs> sorry. I was on mute and I was talking. Um, so sorry for that. Uh, so uh, this is one of my favorite uh, AI tools, and it was introduced by Bobby when we started working on our uh, subcommittee presentation. And it was so helpful because we didn't have to do any work. We just have to like. Uh, say what the presentation is about and it will start generating it for us. Uh, I would again like to show a demo for it. Uh, you cannot start sharing while other is okay. uh, So yeah. Again, it is as simple as whimsical. Uh, we don't have to do anything. We just have to uh, say gamma and Click on the first link that comes up on the Google search. If we want to create a new one, we just have to do this, generate. And uh, I've lost the credit for it because I started building on it. And uh, this was like the presentation that I created. I just have to write what the uh, what the presentation is. Like even if I just had a, a hyperledger as a task, AI task force, it will create the whole theme based presentation for me i can uh, change the themes a theme for it like the colors if i don't like it i can edit them if the image i want to edit everything is so seamless that uh, i don't have to do anything the conclusion even these um, uh, text i can also change them like it uh, edit with ai i need to expand the text i can do that it will do it for me and I can chat here and I can uh, and give my inputs, like turn it into a timeline or something. And it will do it for me. So uh, this is one of the easiest app. If you like have to go and like have to create a presentation in a second, you can do that and you can start presenting. You don't even need your notes with it. So I think this is one of the most amazing uh, AI tools that is out there. And that's all from my side. Thank you so much for listening. Bobby, you can share the screen again. Yeah. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, hope I'm audible. So I'm the um, uh, committee chair of a uh, commu uh, community template so like the main goal of the uh, template team is to like simplify the use of templates with the hyperledger community ensuring like the documentation created is streamlined and unified So like we have discussed uh, what is the role of a uh, community template because like uh, we uh, know uh, in everyday life or like while presenting our PPT or while like in any important presentation, the like role of a uh, template plays uh, like a very great role. So like what the community uh, uh, template team uh, did was like we uh, reviewed the old templates of uh, Hyperledger and updated them with the new guideline and logo, redesigned the uh, existing templates for the better onboarding uh, experience. And like there are some awesome AI tools which we used to modify and like uh, review the templates. These are like uh, ChatGPT, uh, Dan E2, FitJam and Jamboard, my personal favorite, Luca.com, which is like for the logo generation and template generation, 
a uh, clip drop which can like uh, generate uh, images on ai prompt so like uh, the various templates we have uh, in the hyperledger community are like white paper standard user uh, cases blog basic github presentation graphic uh, set standard so like we like did some research on these to like review the and modify the template so like uh, i would like to uh, show the jamboard which is like a, a figma ai tool figma is a design a software which is used for the ui ux designer to enhance the user experience of the website and the app uh, so i would like to uh, give a demo for this I uh, hope my uh, screen is visible. Uh, so, like, this is the Jamboard. Uh, I have. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, and this is about Jamboard. So, like, from here I can uh, use the multiple plugins and all with FigJam uh, gives us. So, through this uh, Jamboard, what I can do is I can ideate, uh, ask a quick question. I can uh, tell teach me about this. Or anything. So, like, if I want to uh, ask something, like, uh, tell me about the uh, project maintainer of documentation. So, like, it will help me uh, ideate. Yes. So, like, this is the ideation phase, like, where uh, I want to, like, uh, create a, a dashboard for, for a project maintainer for the documentation. So, like, uh, it gave me some uh, points, like, create a virtual assistant that update and maintain project. And these are things I can, like, uh, further... Uh, Asked to ideate it or quick question or teach me about or anything. So like I use this uh, AI tool to like uh, develop many templates and like the do the ideation and all stuff. It can like also code this up. Like if I give up a prompt uh, to like uh, let's uh, uh, take a very easy example to like uh, write a code to add two numbers so yes so it uh, wrote the code in uh, python so this is the code so like uh, it can like help us a lot uh, because like uh, Generally, like as a document, uh, documentation writer, we don't generally like to code this stuff. So we can uh, use these tools to to like uh, write the code or generate the code, which can like uh, guide the user or the newcomers to approach the uh, project we have on the GitHub. So this is about the Jamboard. Bobby, you can proceed further. Okay, so uh, next we have the best practices uh, subgroup. Uh, advance. Uh, so in the best practices subgroup, we are planning to uh, build a badge builder. So the badge builder will integrate badge and tokenization seamlessly into the broader uh, hyperledger ecosystem. Uh, next. Okay, so for documentation badging, uh, these are the steps we have uh, planned to do uh, for uh, to gain uh, as a part uh, of the documentation badging.
in system uh, we can gain badges for documentation creation and uh and once the documentation badge is earned for that stage in the life cycle uh, advancement uh, is possible that is uh, we can move to the next uh, stage Okay, so then uh, we have uh, the community dashboards. Uh, the purpose is to describe dashboards uh, to aid community by persona. Uh, as a uh, persona, we have four parts, uh, maintainers dashboard, contributor dashboard, community member, and community curious. Uh, Bobby, can you please explain each of these? Uh, from the next slide, we have each of the dashboards. Oh, um, I can, yeah, sure. I can explain them real quick. I'm sorry. I was on mute and couldn't find it for a second. So when we see the dashboards are like kind of tied to your username so that when you log in, you can click on your dashboard and see like, like kind of like the TOC has a, a list of the tasks that we have to accomplish for the week, something like that. But for maintainers and community people, they can um, assign themselves tasks where people can assign tasks that would show up on the dashboard. If you're a maintainer responsible for a project on your dashboard, you would see all of the five sections that you need to accomplish for best practices. You would see, again, how far you are in each one of those um, sections to achieve your badge or token. Um, and, you know, tied into, again, like a gamified, you know, once you get to the, you know, the, the whole thing filled out, you've done 99.9% .9 of the work, you get to move on to the next, whether it's a uh, stage of your life cycle, if you're a maintainer, whether you're community curious, it's just another course in our identity uh, series or whatever it is that you're doing, that dashboard would be tied to your username and your efforts in the community. Thank you, Arunima, it's back to you. Uh, so Bobby, in the next slides, I think we have uh, uh, have some uh, description. After this, we have the description of each of the dashboards. So maybe you can go through them as well. Uh, can you refresh once? So while I'm finding the right slide to um, also just incorporate something that uh, we have come to uh, discuss is with the um, learning token um, mentorship program, we're trying to work with um, Alfonso and his team to try to incorporate um, that lab into the um, idea of tokenizing the um, efforts. So here is... The slideshow back, sorry for the delay. Let me share my screen. Let me know when you can see my screen. Uh, yeah, we can see it now. So here uh, we have like each of the personas. Uh, I would like to explain uh, these uh, personas and dashboard. Okay, uh, so like for each of uh, the personas which Bobby has mentioned, we have like four sections, user guidance checklist, 
badge and requirements and token, uh, st a status bar and award page and profile card. So, yes, uh, so for the uh, first persona, which is the maintainer's dashboard, like we uh, like introduce these uh, four uh, uh, checklist where like in the user guidance checklist, we want that the maintainer explain the purpose of the user guide to the like mentee, add the screenshot uh, for the user understanding and like uh, for FAQs, mention FAQs, instruction and checklist. In the badging system, uh, there must be a badge for the code contribution and also the clear uh, criteria and information on how the mentee can achieve the badge and uh, token. For the status bar, uh, there, sh there should be like the uh, status of the project where it, it is graduated or like in progress or like upcoming project. Uh, also the visual representations of badges, tokens and awards the timeline or history of badges when the maintain, maintainer or, or the project has on that badge. For the profile card, this is like a normal profile of the maintainer uh, mentioning his or her current project, organization, mentee and uh, etc. Uh, coming to the uh, contributor dashboard, we have like in the user guide, the contributor will develop the user guide, uh, reading the instructions uh, uh, gained by the maintainer uh, dashboard. Also uh, uh, handle the available checklist for the uh, badging requirements. There will be badge for code contribution meetups and like community meetups and events. Status bar is like the status of the mentee project. Uh, evaluation and review by the maintainer and also the award for successfully completing the mentorship period and the profile card there would there would be the ment uh, mentee mentee name uh, his mentor uh, project name and the previous projects and uh, mentor mentors for the like uh, community members uh, who are like volunteers uh, so there would be like we will like introduce the open source to them then there would be like guidance and information on channels that how the community members can get involved co contribute uh, in hyperledger organization uh, there would be detail on how to like contribute bug reports feature etc and checklist uh, checklist for a uh, uh, to track their progress within the organization for the badging requirement, there would be like a uh, badging for them. And yeah, so if the like a community member is a uh, like first uh, uh, newbie, new beginner, so there would be like specific badges for him, like first pull request or like that. Uh, he can also like review the badge and uh, history. The status bar and award page, uh, there would be like, uh, yes, the uh, contribution metrics and like the what commit he has made what documentation contribution or any special feature he has like uh, uh, done or the bug reports and also a ranking system we can introduce like where the top contributors the volunteer contributors uh, can be like show showed in the present organization and also the Pro profile card where the details of the uh, each member would be there. Yeah, so this is the last like the community curious people who are like uh, who just want to like explore the uh, organization. So this is for them the user guide guidance checklist that we will like introduce open source project to them like without contributing. How can they help us? So we would be providing resources on and information on like how to navigate project repositories and all a checklist to get started and explore the project. Uh, there would be the badging requirement would be like there would be specific badges for the explorers and like demonstrate them like how to meet the badge criteria without contributing much and exploring more and helping the community. So the status bar and award page, uh, this is 
same like everyone metrics related to number of projects they explored information like how, how exploring projects support the open source community how that is helping the organization on that basis there would be the ranking system to highlight active community curious members and in the profile card there would be like the name description of interest in organization and like which uh, project they are interested in and they like to deep down more and like contribute so like this is about the four personas Uh, so the uh, last is like the uh, documentation uh, documentation checklist where we will be having like uh, these five uh, points the user guide white paper meetup slides community presentation available templates we have available checklist we have this is like for the documentation builder we have in our organization Uh, okay, thank you, Kajal. Uh, next, uh, we have the uh, user guides uh, subcommittee. So the user guide subcommittee is uh, focused more on creation and accessibility. Currently, we are also working on metaverse content creation hubs and dashboards. And it aims to provide uh, tools to craft comprehensive uh, and easy to understand community user guides. Uh, Bobby, could you? you please explain the slide of how we are planning to uh, create uh, dashboards for user guides? Of course. So uh, we would envision a um, community content creation center so that if you have to create content, you either go to that section of the wiki page, I personally see it in the metaverse, where you can start building your content. We'll give you the AI tools, the style guides, whatever you need. So you're more worried about the content of your information rather than the formatting and the style. Um, and there's great, this is just learn worlds. They drop that into your uh, community content builder section, wherever that is in your website or, or your metaverse. And you just start uh, building the content yourself. Um, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, I do want to run past onboarding quickly because basically onboarding, we just want to have all of these great things accessible in two clicks um, so that any one of those personas kind of know exactly uh, where to go seamlessly. Um, and we're working with the onboarding task force for that. Um, but when they get to onboarding that the documentation they need and the user guides or whatever information they need uh, is clear and accessible. So I'm going to turn it back over to Arunima to introduce the very exciting next section of our presentation. Okay, so the next section we have the AI trends in the enterprise documentation. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we are planning to create AI powered community user guides. Uh, these are the few areas that we are uh, planning to uh, cater to. Uh, like a course planner, uh, AI powered uh, tools to assist in generating course outlines and learning activities. We are also planning to uh, create assessment designer to swiftly create diverse, precise assignments with AI with efficiency and accuracy. A uh, email creator, like engage learners with AI, enhance impactful emails, uh, fostering motivation. We also uh, plan to uh, use learning tokens, uh, like reward learners with learning tokens, uh, like some educational bonus bonuses to encourage them to learn more. We also uh, plan to incorporate a feedback generator to deliver constructive and personalized feedback uh, promptly. We don't, in uh, no pun intended, we uh, hope, would like really focus to del deliver some constructive feedback using AI. Uh, another can be the ebook writer and uh, ebook writer we uh, the ai crafted comprehensive ebook uh, writer to seamlessly uh, to systematically uh, develop learning tracks uh, to convey knowledge effectively uh, to designated audiences and, and the content editor to elevate content quality with ai polished uh, text ensuring clarity and consistency uh, so moving ahead uh, we have a really interesting uh, section 
that uh, I will uh, like to hand over uh, the stage to Gianluca and he will be uh, discussing his work on open source AI tool that he has been working on. Okay, thank you, Anurma. Yes, this is a very exciting uh, um, topic for me. Uh, open source, because uh, I'm working with uh, open source model, and the, the goal of the, the, of the project is uh, uh, actually is a, a proof of concept uh, to have um, to implement um, a system like ChatGPT uh, for people uh, that um, don't want to read, uh, for example, uh, documentation and uh, prefer to ask questions to the system. Um, okay, in the next slide. Next slide. Yeah, this, this is a picture, and it's an example. Um, okay, the, the technology, the background technology is uh, the transformer. Uh, we also know um, a large language model like uh, GPT engine. And there is a list of um, main application in natural language processing, text classification, uh, also called sentiment analysis, uh, text translation, uh, text generation, for example, from a, a sentence to a paragraph, uh, uh, and uh, also the contrary, uh, the text sum, sum, the summarization from a par paragraph to a sentence, and um, question answering the, uh, that is interesting for, for us, uh, because we, we want to use uh, this, uh, this technology to, to do that. And last is, uh, uh, means uh, also we can uh, use uh, different um, application of, of, as combination to have uh, best performance. Okay, uh, this is the uh, open source model uh, downloaded uh, from Hugging Face. The name is uh, XLMR, uh, based on BERT, and uh, it has um, 560 million parameters. Uh, I uh, test in my laptop and consists of two uh, main components, the body pre-trained using the standard Stanford uh, question answering data set and the head uh, for the fine tuning, uh, which means the uh, domain application using hyperledger data. Uh, in the next slide, we see uh, a, a snippet of uh, the um, um, Stanford uh, question answering data set. Uh, there are um, one, uh, one, 100,000 question answering um, in English from uh, uh, English articles. And this is um, a sentence uh, which explains this kind of trick, the transfer learning, uh, to, uh, to give you a sense of uh, difference between fine tuning and training a model. Fine tuning is like taking your car to the mechanic and getting the new spark plugs, whereas training is like getting a whole new engine. So it's it's a way to um, to save uh, much time for the training phase. Uh, yes, this is the domain adaptation. Now I'm using a few documents from uh, Hyperledger existing documentation. And in the next slide, this is an example. Uh, this is the, the architecture. Uh, the uh, two main components, the retriever and the reader. Retriever uh, works with uh, unstructured tons of unstructured documents and uh, retrie retrieve the most relevant documents and retards to the reader. The reader is the uh, AI model that uh, extracts the, the answer for the, uh, the user. Uh, next slide. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is the, the current uh, techniques. Uh, use a, a pipeline with a stack library and Elasticsearch is the um, retriever and the reader, the um, open source uh, model uh, XLM that uh, already already see. And the next slide, I think. Yeah, uh, I, um, I like to share my screen for a short demo. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, uh, now the system is um, is running, and he, um, he tells me ask me something about hyperledger documentation. An example could be uh, what is hyperledger 
Jar fabric, for example. And also is uh, the most active of Hyperledger project. And it, it also give us uh, the text snippet where the system extract the, the, the answer. Just one other, what is the mission of Fiberledger? We can also expect wrong, uh, wrong response, nutrying open source project under open governments that grow strong, sustaining community and thriving driving ecosystem. Uh, anyone want to ask a question to the system? Okay, no. Uh, How about what's the first step in installing fabric? We try. Okay, so it, uh, step eight, I don't know, I think it's <laughs> it's the, the wrong response. It, I think it, it depends also uh, to the fact that I, I'm using a uh, few documents and uh, one improvement could be to add more documentation to the system uh, to, to improve the, the answer. And okay, just to finish the, uh, if you can mm -hmm. share again, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, for future improvement uh, on the left, we have the current model and uh, technology using. And uh, on the right, we have, um, we can improve the system, for example, using GPT for all, uh, which uses uh, billions of parameters, uh, add other documents uh, to the data set uh, using existing do uh, Hyperledger documentation, and also using, for example, uh, RAG uh, technology which is generative, it means that um, extracting the answer, it, uh, can, it, it uh, will be able to change uh, words, terms in the, in the response. Okay, in the next slide. Yeah, um, this, I, uh, I, sorry. I hate to sorry. interrupt, um, but I do know that it is eight o'clock. I personally have to drop, um, but uh, you know, Feel free to, to finish up if you want, um, but I, I will need to drop. Okay, let me just okay. uh, round up for the TOC. So our two recommendations would be to, um, again, have a discussion over the points that we mentioned and how to incorporate them or to incorporate them. And then we also uh, are recommending, which will, if you can stay on the call, you can see two additional task force, one for the enterprise AI um, FAQ, which we're going to introduce as a lab. Um, and then the other one is just to get this stuff in a, in a library and we'll show you um, next what, how we think that should look. Um, so thank you if you have to drop at the hour um, for listening to us. I have to drop, but I'd love to hear more and maybe a, a short uh, section next week on the, on the recommendations because um, I'd love to be able to take some of this. So I, how can I get at my hands on you know, the learnings you've come across? Uh, uh, you know what? We can pause right here and come back next week and do the recommendations. Um, if everyone... I think that would be best. Okay, let's do that. Then thank you very much for uh, your time and for my team, the mentees. You guys are awesome. You did a great job. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.